across the country to train women on this and other skills. When I started, I used my village as Njao as my implementing area. Whatever I learned outside, I come to the group and I implement it there to see whether it will work better. Mm -hmm. And it worked really better because I, I understand that the women, they can do it and they are always willing to do it. So I feel like starting with the women and youths, I can get it where I want it to be. So in West Coast, I have four villages, Yundum, Banjulunding, Sumita, and Sipo. I'm working with the women, and they are, do, they are doing different products. You know, we use the recycling, but starting with the recycling, their brain is open. They use, we use it as an open mind. When they come together, always they think about how they can protect themselves and how they can be creative to be able to help their families. And at the same her work has not gone unnoticed, as she was among 100 other women who were awarded in the United States for their hard work. This, as I believe, has put the Gambia once again on the world map and given her great pride. I was so happy that Gambia is part of it, and a lot of people, they were thinking that Gambia is small. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that Gambia is small, and I believe that, you know, to adopt people or to adopt something that is small. Because if you take a big tree, you want to plant it, replant it, it is, it is always difficult. But if you have a seedling, you replant it, it's always half water, and whenever it has water and you nurture it, it will grow very well and it will grow very bright. She's also full of praise for the President of the Republic, for his untiring efforts to empower women. For her, women should reciprocate these efforts by striving hard and working together to build a prosperous country. Omar Jalo, GRTS. Given the importance of proper food preparation, especially the one prepared for school-going children, the Gambia School Nutrition has gathered food vendors to train them on healthy preparation of locally made meals. Ibrahim Ajata reports the idea is to ensure school-going children are provided healthy meals in school. Towards a soaring hill and hearty students, representatives of several schools convened for a round table on snack meal preparations for 15 schools at the Region 2 Directorate Hall in Brikama. As I said to N. C. Khan explains, the tutorial which drew participants from different schools in Region 2 is meant to build the capacities of school nutritionists and food vendors on meal planning and preparation as well as food safety methods. Children, according to this nutritionist, particularly need sufficient balanced diets to stay strong and healthy. Besides a host of benefits, a balanced diet endows them with the required physical and mental status, boosting both health and academic performance. The School Nutrition Association, SNA Region 2 Coordinator, Aisha Tunjawanget, joined her colleagues to emphasize the critical importance of snack meals, which could be anything from the locally favored brood called Ebe or Nanburu. Nutrition officials describe these two as the most common foods sold in Gambian schools. Whilst accentuating the spicy and balanced meal afforded by this local cuisine, set in an enticingly diverse list of ingredients which include fish, palm oil and cassava, Aisha Tunjawanget get stated a few challenges such as the addition of artificial spices and coloring to school meals, raising what she calls a major food safety concern. The significance of school meals and the issue of food health and safety were further emphasized by the Association Secretary General Suleiman Ibrahim Gajigo, who stated the organization's mission to advocate for quality school feeding programs, ensuring that children get access to healthy and nutritious meals during the course of their education. Working within the context of the Food Safety and Quality Act, that's definitely important to the Secretary General, who called for respect of food safety school feeding policy and the improvement of cooking methods applying the knowledge learned from the program. Snacks and simple meals, easily cooked and quickly eaten, equipping snack meal vendors with the requisite knowledge and skills can greatly help in achieving the association's quest to secure good and healthy meals for children. Ibrahim Jata, GRTS. Take it again, please. The local insect called Gawe is largely used during the rainy season in the country by most women due to its power of reducing odor in the household. It has been used in the country for centuries. To find out how this famous insect called Gawe is produced, the state broadcaster visited one of the sites in Lower Salom, as Tumane reports. Gawe is largely used in the Senegambe region, especially during the rainy season due to its capacity of reducing odor. The koe can be reproduced in several forms by adding spray, roasting it or even using it in its dry form. In whatever way it is, it can be found in our markets and houses in various forms. The goe incense is just normal grass that likely grows in swampy areas. 
These women who engage in the processing of the intents identify the ideal type of grass for use in the preparation of goe. As it is seen, this is the very grass the incense seeds comes from. The place is very muddy, making it difficult for them to walk properly. They have their tools in digging up the incense, which takes several hours before they get enough. A day routine which sounds very tiring, but these women have to do this to make ends meet. The process, as Aji Awacham explains, is not easy, as they barely walk without enough tools, and it requires strength as the digging alone is hectic. Even though they walk during the rainy season, work for them is easier in the dry season. The likes of Ami Bayo prefer digging around the water area, according to her, it's easier to dig. After having dug the incense, they wash it in the waters, clean themselves before heading offshore. After washing the incense, Ya Awathure explains that there are two types of gowe. One is dark in color due to the water, and the other is offshore, which usually is red and hard to get, but the scent is always the same. Having worked the whole day, they are now set to go offshore, where they burn the incense with its sticks. This is how they endure the uncomfortable smoke from the fire, while fanning down the flames of maintaining an all-around burn. They will pick the incense and pound it in a mortar to clean it. The final part is winnowing, and the gowe incense is set for the market. It is easy buying and lighting the famous gowe in our houses. But this is the routine these women endure every day to make ends meet and pay for their children's education. For GRTS News, I am Esther Tumane. We now take our first break. The news continues in a moment. Ghana's leading ICT company, Assemblers of Mobile Phones and Computers, is now in the Gambia too. We are happy to bring our services to the people of Gambia and look forward to lasting relationships with the state and its people. Come choose from our range of phones and computers and enjoy delightful after-sale service and the confidence of warranties that will keep your devices good as new. Visit ROG at 62 Caraba Avenue, Circular K. SMD opposite the pipeline mass or check out rlggambia.com for more information. RLG, proudly yours. People in Mali are voting in the second round of a landmark presidential election. The vote comes after more than a year of turmoil involving a military coup and an Islamist insurgency, which, has, which was contained only after French and African forces intervened. The stakes are high and donors say millions of dollars in aid will be released only when a democratic government is in place. We have more on that story in this report. Torrential rain in the capital, Bamako, threatened to affect turnout for the runoff. But six and a half million voters have until this evening to cast their vote. The candidates include former Prime Minister Ibrahim Boubacar Kieta, who is popularly known as IBK and is supported by Mali's military and influential moderate Muslim leaders. His rival is former Finance Minister Soumaila Sissé, a sharp critic of last year's coup leaders. Neither won an outright majority in the first round two weeks ago, but this time one of them will emerge the winner. I'm waiting for IBK's victory. I'm waiting for his victory, the victory of IBK. Change has to come to Mali. It's a given. We don't doubt him. In the life of all nations, you often get a clog in the wheel, but it's nothing that can't be overcome. Since the military coup almost 18 months ago, Mali has been rocked by unrest between the central government in Bamako and Tuareg rebels and Islamist groups in the north. They've agreed to hold peace talks with the new government within two months of the election. With so much at stake, the new president will need a strong mandate. Fears are growing of a return to widespread sectarian violence in Iraq. At least 60 people were killed and more than 300 injured in a series of bombings in several cities Saturday. The attacks took place during celebrations marking the end of Ramadan. The international community has condemned the violence, with the U.S. describing the attackers as enemies of Islam. We have details in this report. District in northeast Baghdad clean up the aftermath of Saturday's attacks, where Eid celebrations turn to tragedy. 
A car was parked here and a man tried to defuse the bomb inside.